All right, today's question is going to have our snake award. <laughs> Do optical cleaning products enhance CDs? This question comes from Ross in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And Ross bravely writes, I am always trying to eke the most out of my CDs and SACDs. We all are. So I've developed a treatment process for my discs over the past couple of years and wondered if you think these steps actually do anything to enhance audio playback. Back when I had a lesser quality DAC and transport, I was sure I heard improvements after these treatments. But now that I have your DMP, I'm not so sure anymore. This is my first treatment process for all my audio discs. First, I wash my discs with a rather expensive fluid to remove any residual mold grease using a microfiber cloth. I then rinse with water and dry, again with a microfiber cloth. Next, I treat my discs, discs in a Nanotech Nespa Pro for usually 60 flashes of high-intensity light. Finally, I buff my discs with a magic potion from Jenna Labs called Ultrabit Diamond Plus. I am willing to bet you have heard all of these esoteric rituals to enhance optical disc playback, but I wondered what your take on them was. Do you think these processes actually improve the audio quality of optical media, or should I just pop the darn things into my transport as is? Thanks so much for any advice you have. And, and that's, that's Ross. Well, a good long question, Ross, and again, you, you get the snake award today. The answer is, is, again, not a clear one. And the reason is, and as you've noticed, in our player, you, tr you clean those discs and you don't hear a lot of difference. Yet, when you put it into uh, another player, you, you hear those differences. And I think I know why that is. And so let me start out by, by just pissing off everybody that is waiting uh, to, to get angry. Uh, I don't want you to wait too long, okay? I have personally, uh, and, and here's where I'll lose the respect of, uh, I don't know, a lot of audience, and okay. I have demagnetized CDs, full well knowing as an engineer that there are no magnetic properties within a CD and it's impossible that a demagnetizing, a degaussing device is going to do squat. And yet, eh, 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 put it in, and I have heard a difference. I have cleaned using, we, I've used uh, Rain-X. I've tried uh, George's Ultrabit Diamond. And um, I have heard all those things work. And they have actually improved the sound quality of CDs. But I've also found that I no longer do any of those things. And I, I, I do what he's asking if he should. I plop and go. Put the disc in, hit it, and go. Why? Well, let me give you my theory. And it's only a theory, because I assume now everybody else who, who's gotten pissed and, and uh, the snakes have, have come out of their cages and bitten us all, that uh, um, they're gone. Okay, so, so here's Paul's theory. And it's based on nothing but supposition and just a little bit of knowledge, all right? What we have found is that as we build players, transports that read optical discs, the less work that those transports have to do, the better that they sound. And I think the reason for that has to do with the, the way that uh, a jitter is presented into our clocks. We know for a fact that if a power supply that is used in common uh, gets uh, hammered pretty hard, uh, currents go onto the ground plane and, and they are, since everything is tied into the same ground plane, those distributed noisy currents um, will jitter signals. And, and we do our damnedest to make that not happen, to isolate the power supplies, to make sure that our clock at the output is completely independent as possible of, of everything going on 
to this side of it where the player is and where the power supply is. Still, some measure of jitter gets in, but in ours, they're pretty low. And one of the things that we do that most manufacturers of transports, almost every manufacturer of transports don't do, is that we run all of our signals, the digital data coming off of that disk into a very large buffer where it sits for a long time until it's ready to be output with a fixed low jitter clock. So that no matter what's going on over here, if it's having trouble reading the disk, if it has to read it multiple times, if it's uh, struggling to read the disks, and that happens. I mean, a poor disk, so you can see it. It'll take longer to read, you'll get more errors, as opposed to a brand new disk, or perhaps one that's been cleaned. Um, whatever we've done to it to make it easier. That, in a normal CD player, passes through easier with less trouble on the power supplies and less jitter at the master clock that we are generating in that transport in that CD player and sending out to our DACs. Now in our players we don't really worry about that too much which is why these uh, cleaning things don't really matter in ours because regardless of how hard it is for our transport to read the disk in our players it doesn't matter because it all collects up into a big buffer we call the digital lens and then as output, uh, it takes its time. There's a, there's a lag there. In, in our older transports, there were, you, we, we ripped uh, 30, 40 seconds of the disk before you ever heard anything. So I think that's what's going on there and why in our players you don't, you don't hear that and you don't need to clean your disks. But in most others, it's probably a really good idea. Thanks. Bye.